This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Welcome back, everybody. Hour two of Hot Mike rolls on on this Monday morning. Stevie Keller, NDSU track coach, going to join us in about a half hour recap. Peyton Otterdahl's fantastic weekend, just shy of the podium at the Olympics in Paris, and also about the wild 100-meter race that happened last night. That's coming up in about a half hour. You know, we're getting to the end of the summer when uh, we're talking about our next uh, topic, which is the Central Plains Baseball Regional. That is back on this side of the state uh, this coming week in West Fargo. It'll open up on Wednesday with eight teams there. The winner of this will head to the American Legion World Series in North Carolina. We've been pretty fortunate the last couple of years. We've had a team from North Dakota go in 2019 and 2021. We'll see it can happen again in 2024. Actually, the next two uh, years, the Central Plains Regional will be here. This year in West Fargo, next year at Starian Field. The man running things, uh, Todd Rowe, is good enough to join us on the show. He's the chair of the Central Plains Regional uh, committee out in West Fargo, and they get going on Wednesday. I can't believe actually I actually got you for like 10 minutes. I know you're going to be going uh, going crazy and checking the weather, but things look pretty good. Looks like you guys going to be okay. You're not going to be boiling at least this week. Boy, I tell you, yeah, thanks. You know, that uh, watching that state tournament or star on <laughs> which, you know, they did just an unbelievable job. But holy cow, guys like me, Dom, don't, shouldn't be out in weather like that for that long. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, kind of talking to some of the head umpire in chief just called me he's on his way from nebraska and he was watching the weather and he goes oh man and he's like about a six foot ten guy he goes wow. i don't know if i'd make it and he goes see i saw the weather and he, so he's pretty excited about mid-70s i'll tell you that much you have a six ten umpire coming this week I, I i swear he's that tall he was at the regionals uh, a couple years ago when i saw it i have to see the how, how tall he actually is but he is a tall gentleman <laughs> if that's the case we got to do a story on that guy i'm, I'm gonna tell you yeah, that right? right now i'd like to know his strike zone has got to be uh impossible uh yeah. how long have you been working on this i know you, you got announced a couple years ago is that when the planning for this really started it really did it started a couple years back you know as you stated it, it's been in south dakota the last few years and it's on a two-year basis and uh so when we started kind of planning for this we started thinking you know how about giving other kids a chance and other programs a chance and it it worked out really well so we you know we kind of partnered with post 400 which you know we have a great relationship with jeff gould and the crew over there and you know a lot of our philosophies and stuff are the same and we started saying you know we can use the same host hotel you know teams that have to drive in and fly out you know come into the same area and you know it just made a lot of sense you know for you know our program to get you know ultra excited this year and their program ultra excited next year and you know what the you know, the good baseball that's played in this town, um, you know, we knew both teams would have good representations and, you know, and, and show up to play. So now it's actually here. How crazy is the planning been now? You've been leading up to it. Now it's actually game week. It, it is kind of crazy. You know, the one thing that helped us get us, Dom, is, is our community. You know, they, they know how well we support it from a media, you know, such people like you and, you know, a, kind of a crazy one, the busing company, Valley Bus, um, Cordell over there was a huge part of it because, you know, when it was in uh, Rapid City, it's a little harder to get there where this is a little yeah. bit easier. So uh, for those that don't know, once the teams are announced, you know, if, if it's Renner, South Dakota or Osseo, Minnesota or Papillion, Nebraska, you know, uh, his group over there will leave here, go pick those teams up wow. and actually bring them back wow. to here. So that, that's a big part of, you know, some of the stuff that's behind the scenes that people don't know about. So and the economic impact that, you know, we bring to the West Fargo, Fargo, Moorhead area, you know, I think in something like this is just just really cool. But, yeah, the planning started a long time ago. But, you know, safety and numbers and, you know, in West Fargo and, you know, in the area, we have such a great help people that will, you know, from businesses to people jumping out of the woodworks. And you can't imagine the number of people that have called me and said, do you need help with anything, if it's <laughs> grilling burgers or whatever. So you might see some fun people grilling uh, what I feel is the best burger in town here uh, that you might recognize. Saying, I didn't know they were you know, with West Fargo. Well, they might not be. I got a Craig Ritchie who's a big baseball guy. He's going to nope. be grilling some burgers for us just to kind of throw a name out. I will say, every time I ever went to Young Field, I never left hungry. I will tell you that right mm -hmm. now. Anytime I was shooting a baseball game, that's that's for darn sure. Um, yeah. The game on Saturday, you were there. I mean, there's not better way to – there's no other better way to win a state championship than when, uh, how Aiden Wolf done it. Describe being there and seeing that moment on Saturday. Well, when you just said it, I, honestly, the hair in my arms are standing up again. I mean, I got goosebumps. It, it's so special to see a kid like that. Uh, great family, uh, you know, great kid, great teammate. And, you know, he's battled through some injuries. He came back from college and, 
you know, hasn't been able to play a whole lot. And I, I think I, I could be wrong, but I think that was his first appearance in the state tournament. Wow. Um, he had a couple previous at bats before that, but that game was his first appearance. So to see that happen um, for a kid like that, it, I, I can't even explain it. The number of people and it was just a great baseball game. I mean, you know, you hear the words instant classic, yeah. you know, if we could throw that on ESPN, it really was between two really, really good baseball teams that are, well coached, well disciplined, and you know, great fan base. And uh, but to end it that way, you know, third third state championship in four years, it was uh, pretty doggone special. And now both of them advance on. How important is that, Todd? That each the West Fargo and Post Two are going to be here this coming week. Well, I think it's great representation for North Dakota baseball. And you know, both of us had battles. I mean, we we had a walk off home run against Jamestown. You know, who was a lower seed, but they had us. And you know, yeah. Fargo. Had some tough games against Bismarck and Minot, and you know, uh, uh, post 400 played very well in the tournament. So, I mean, North Dakota baseball represents well. The tournaments that you've seen our teams go to during the summer, we we do pretty doggone well. So, having two teams in here, I think, uh, you know, it would not surprise me if one of the two walk out of this and you know have a trip to Shelby down the road. Give us the lowdown the rest of the field here that's going to be in town this week. Yeah, we, you know, we open up against uh, state champion Nebraska, which, you know, it, it rotates. It's uh, not to diminish any other team, but Nebraska, whoever comes out of there, has a dogfight and really good, bat, you know, baseball. And Papillion is who we play. And I've heard rumors they have uh, some really high-end Division One pitching. Um, Wouldn't surprise Fargo me. Fargo <laughs> ends up playing Elkhorn, Nebraska, who is the runner-up, who, you know, won't be any slouch. And then we have Renner, South Dakota, who won the South Dakota, and they play – uh, Minnesota champion Farmington and then we uh, ha also have uh, Swisher Iowa which is you look it up it's a town of 825 but their team is comprised of Johnson County which oh. is a monstrous county yeah. so a little <laughs> deceiving there so they always bring a good team and they've they've uh, when we were in Dickinson we were actually one run away from going to the World Series and that's the team that knocked yep. us out remember that so obviously good baseball there and then Osseo Minnesota who Seems like every other year is kind of attending the regions out of there. So eight great teams, eight teams that could win it and should be some very, very high level baseball. I know they're coming here to play Todd, but what you tell the teams that are coming in, what do, what do you tell them about West Fargo, Fargo, that experience to get them set up to, to enjoy their time here? That that's one thing that's changed on, you know, back, uh, you know, when I had kids go through the program back in, you know, 2007, 2012, it was hard to get teams like, great and prep yeah. and, and uh, teams like that to come here and play well now they come here and they see the amenities that over at starry on field they see young field they see you know jack williams is historic and, and you know the other north code and it's really changed they want to come here they know they can come here even if it's not a tournament and play a four game set against you know 400 and us or or post two and us and they're going to get you know very competitive games at very nice fields so it's uh, it's different than it used to be. Teams seem to want to come to the West Fargo, Fargo area, you know, A, for the competition, but B, the amenities. And, you know, it's North Dakota nice, Dom. Yeah. We, we treat them well. We, uh, <laughs> we have a really exciting thing happening. We, we are doing a banquet. And uh, the lights over there, Mike Amundsen and the crew have helped us out with that. Wow. So that's where our opening ceremonies are going to be, our oh. opening banquet's going to be. Nice. So put on the turf there. So we're really excited to showcase that. Um have Andy Young coming in to kind of be our guest speaker to talk about his experiences through through life of uh, both Legion baseball. He played four years and, you know, college and then obviously the pros. Um, so that'll be kind of exciting. We're going to do a little Q&A with him um, on that. So we have some stuff planned for them. You know, it's it's about baseball, but as you know, it's about the experience too. Todd Rowe joining us, Central Plains Regional Chair. Everything begins Wednesday with the first game at 930. And I'm looking at my Storm Tracker app. That's the one day it may actually have have some rain. So you may have to dodge some uh, some raindrops there on Wednesday, but then the rest of the week looks great. It does. You know, got perfect playing weather in the 70s. And, you know, we have turf, so that's yep. nice. Um, that'll, you know, help, uh, help me breathe a little easier. But, yeah, we can dodge <laughs> Wednesday because we'd sure love to get all four games yeah. in. We have some exciting stuff with opening ceremonies with some people from some of our partners from Shields and Essential Health throwing out some first pitches and, you know, some things like that. So we'd really like to showcase some of that, uh, have a big thing planned, you know, for opening ceremonies and expect a huge crowd. So hopefully Mother Nature cooperates. I remember when I was texting this morning about being out at West Fargo. Gosh, it was probably October, September, October, when you guys got the turf down. I don't remember what year this was now. It's got to be a, at least a decade, maybe around there of the turf came 
Um, that was innovative. No one else had it. Now it seems like everybody has it. Describe being out the forefront of that, saying we need this. And I've talked with Brett Peterson about this for time and memoriam about having the turf there. But that was shocking, Frank. Nobody else had done that yet until you guys did it. It, it was hard. I, I got to admit, I you know I drug that field over and over, <laughs> being you know coaching high school for twenty years with Coach Peterson, and then obviously being involved with the Legion for twenty years. And, you know, so I spent a lot of time on, uh, on the tractor and I, you know, we kind of took pride in, you know, trying to make it good, but, you know, with our weather for the high school season and in the summer and the number of games we have, it, it's almost impossible. You know, you, you just couldn't do it. And I was a little skeptical to start. And then once we got it, I don't think I'd ever turn back Hence is <laughs> everybody else. And I, I remember you there that day down yeah. kind of walking on it yeah. and, you know, and you, you kind of interviewing some players and it's a, if it's difference maker, you know, and as we're getting more kids to college, as we're getting more kids drafted, as we're getting more kids in the pros, scouts are coming up here. I, I remember a game this year, you know, there were seven scouts at the game and they knew they were going to get to watch the game. You know, we weren't going to get rained out probably. And if not, we'd get it in. So it's a game changer. It, it, you bring it up. I think Bismarck's getting turf now mm. after the end of the year. Jamestown is looking at it at Jack Brown, you know, so we can look at the double a and it could be seven or eight of the 10 teams will have turf Wow, um, that, that didn't before. I know Castleton's looking at it, you know, with their program. So it's filtering down and, you know, our fields are so beautiful around here and the turf just kind of adds to it. Last thing, how big it was in West Fargo last month to see Matt Strom be announced as a National League all-star pitch in the all-star game. I know how close he is with your family. Describe that and what that was like last month. Yeah. You know, Matt's uh, it, it's just a phenomenon. And, you know, we, I think you had talked about the show. I think you had on uh, the coach from the O show, yeah. yep. you know, the pipeline that we had. So, you know, it is, you know, and Matt started that um, it, you talk about paving the way for many other players. You know, he, he could not only be attributed being, you know, obviously an all-star playing in the major leagues for nine years and, you know, obviously pitching in an all-star game and, you know, having a success he had. And it, it's so cool. If you look at our field, uh, uh, pla plastered around is, you know, it's West Fargo baseball. There's no substitute for hard work. And quite honestly, Matt, you know, is the guy that's kind of helped got that going. And, 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 and a lot of guys have believed in that. So he paved the way, you know, even though he's having obviously his success for himself, you know, his success and other success can be attributed to, you know, the way he did things. And, you know, we had Andy and, you know, Tanner Dahl, yeah. and, you know, uh, Casey Clements is there right now and, he can, you know, go on and on, uh, Alex Erlob. So, I mean, it just paved the way for opportunities for kids in our area, um, not only West Fargo, but, you know, other area North Dakota kids. So it is uh, very special. It's always fun to see you know, from West Fargo, North Dakota, you know, and we, we've had to correct them a few times because the Fargo gets brought in there and that's all good too. But, you know, we are a little bit different, <laughs> but uh, so it, it, it's been something that's been special to all of us and everything he has earned, he deserves. I'll say this, Joe Davis said West Fargo like four or five times on the, on the all-star broadcast. He made sure he said West Fargo. So he did his homework. He's my new hero. So, <laughs> I, uh, and, and, you know, for other reasons, but that's one of them. So, but yeah, no, kind of tongue in cheek when I say that, because really, you know, when we get people out there asking about, you know, calling the coaches and stuff, you know, they ask about all the kids. Hey, I know you played against this kid or that kid. And we're more than happy to talk about, you know, Drew Rarick or more than happy to talk about, you know, the Leinigers or mm -hmm. whoever it may be. There, there's just a lot of good baseball kids here in, you know, being from North Dakota, we all we got to be proud of whoever makes it, and, and you root for them all. I know you're a busy man. Try and get some sleep tonight because I know you're not going to get any the rest of the week. Thanks so much for giving us some time this morning. Good luck, and I hope the weather gods are on your side uh, the rest of the week, okay? All right, Dom. Thanks, as always, for everything you do for our youth sports. Appreciate it. Todd Rowe, Central Plains Regional Chair, who will be running things out in West Fargo at Young Field. Competition, the tournament begins on Wednesday, the first game at 9.30. The two uh, North Dakota teams will play uh, later. Fargo Post 2 will play Elkhorn, Nebraska at 3.30 on Wednesday. And then West Fargo will play at 7 against Papillion, Nebraska in the final game of the day. It is double elimination. And as I mentioned, the winner moves on to the American Legion World Series in Shelby, North Carolina. Just And this is no uh, slight or slouch to Fargo Post 400 who did it a couple years ago. But... 
when that Fargo Post 2 team did it in Sioux Falls in the, in the summer of 2019, it was amazing. Kolpak lived it. His son Brant was on the team uh, that year. I mean, Kolpak was gone. He was on the road for about two and a half weeks, but I don't think he'd ever trade that again. Of And how we talk about last summer's experience with the Fargo Little Leaguers, it was the same thing with the Legion team. They And they came all made to the championship game and had a dynamite run. And uh, we'll see if one of the North Dakota teams can make a run here this week. We're over to it for a break. We'll get caught up on a couple of emails. A couple of other topics we want to hit from the weekend as well as we roll on on a busy Monday. I'll Mike back after this.